Um, but uh, my name is Jay Satsuma, and I'm delighted uh, to be able to introduce uh, Dr. Alex Rogels today. Um, one of my favorite subjects really is the Japanese performing arts. And uh, Dr. Rogels um, has his PhD uh, from the University of Hawaii in Asian theater. And he just recently received it. Congratulations, Alex, in, in spring 2022. And he's currently um, a Japanese studies fellow at Hunter's College a Japanese uh, program where he is extremely busy. He teaches a number of classes on topics such as Japanese theater, of course, but also uh, detective fiction, uh, Japanese horror, uh, mythology, uh, wonderful classes. I would like to, to take your classes, uh, Alex. Um, in addition, he uh, received a grant from the Japan Foundation. And with that grant, he is spearheading a, a Japanese uh, network series where uh, he introduces, or the network series introduce, introduces working professionals uh, and they share their, um, how they uh, use Japanese language and culture in their careers. And that's a wonderful incentive uh, for students who are studying and, and they can follow in their place. Um, he has also published his uh, research in the Asian uh, Theater Journal. And he continues to do his research um, based on his dissertation. And today he's going to share with us um, a part of that. Thank you so much, Alex. I wish I could give you a late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. All right. All right, so I, I guess I should take it away. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you for uh, coming today. Uh, thank you to uh, Gay Satsuma and Director Levin uh, and the Center for Japanese Studies at uh, University of Hawaii at Manoa for having me. I'm really excited to uh, have the chance to talk about uh, some of my dissertation, uh, which is titled Locale, Liminality, and Legitimacy in Contemporary Sagi Kyogen conceptualizing tradition outside Kyogen's professional world. It's a mouthful, I know. Uh, so my dissertation looks at the history of the Sagi style of Kyogen uh, and its transformation into a regional art form uh, during the Meiji period, uh, which is 1868 uh, through 1912. Uh, and then con the contemporary, primarily it focuses on the contemporary practice. Uh, so I'm going to open up a uh, PowerPoint that I have. So let me share my screen. Uh, so yes, uh, here it is. Uh, uh, this is a picture of the Yamaguchi Sagiriyu Preservation Society and a production, uh, an original production uh, of a play called Tanuki Damashi, or Deceiving the Badger, uh, which is written by that fellow in the center, not the one in the the crazy, uh, the crazy uh, Tanuki costume, but uh, the fellow in the uh, probably more recognizable Kyogen garb, uh, uh, Yonemoto Bunmei, who's the current head of this group. I'll get more to uh, him and also to the fellow who is hidden behind that mask uh, in a bit. Uh, so if I can, uh, just a quick primer uh, for those of you who may not know a lot about Kyogen, also just to give you a little contextualization about um, sort of what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so uh, Kyogen is a traditional comedic performing art, uh, and it's a partner to the no drama. Uh, both art forms have histories uh, of about 600 plus years, uh, at least in their um, realized forms. Uh, and they evolved from a combination of Chinese imported variety arts, uh, and they were fused with local performing arts uh, native to uh, the Japanese islands. Uh, taking basic shape around the 15th century, No and Kyogen artistic families begin currying favor with the samurai class, which proves very important uh, when the ultimate unification of Japan happens uh, in the at the beginning of the uh, 1600s uh, and the establishment of the Tokugawa shogunate, uh, which is also the start of uh, the either the Tokugawa or the Edo period, uh, whichever you would like to call it. 
Um, while No tells stories that are typically uh, very serious, uh, Kilgan tells comedic stories uh, using stock characters uh, rooted in medieval uh, Japanese life, uh, including wily servants, quack priests, dim-witted masters, and less than dignified gods and spirits. Now, during the early Edo era, the shogunate de designated certain No and Kilgan styles or view uh, as shikigaku or ceremonial arts of the shogunate. Uh, and along with this came exclusive government patronage and samurai status uh, for certain uh, performing families uh, in Noan Kilgen who belonged to specific Ryu. Now, in the case of Kilgen, uh, these were the Okura, Izumi, and Sagi Ryu, uh, as you can see here uh, in this slide. Uh, so this adoption also leads to a rapid codification of both art forms uh, and a centralization of certain performing arts families. Uh, now, to be clear, by the 1600s, both No and Kilgan are already traditional performing arts. So what does all of this mean for Kilgan? Well, firstly, um, this patronage means that the improvisational and somewhat subversive elements that characterized Kyogen previously, they were removed and the comedy became more pleasant than sensational. Uh, sensation was prim primarily for this newfangled art form called kabuki, and it was that was for the masses, not for the refined samurai. Uh, and to be fair, if you were a daimyo or a, a, a regional warlord, you really didn't want to watch a play in which was directly critical of anything that you were doing. It's just not appropriate. So uh, Kilgan winds up uh, losing much of its edge. Now, this codification has another important consequence as well. Uh, and this is really the context for my talk today. As, uh, as knowing Kilgan... Uh, were now government recognized traditions, it's important that they demonstrate their history. It was important that they demonstrated their histories. And so family lineages were drawn up or invented, uh, citing years and years of quote unquote unbroken tradition passed on from male, male actor to male actor. Uh, as with many other Japanese traditional performing arts, no, uh, and Kyogen is a strictly male affair, male performer affair, at least when we're talking about the professionals. Now, the No and Kyogen actors, they adopt uh, the Iemoto or Grand Master model, uh, placing a single male heir at the head of, at the, head of the school. Um, as explained by P.G. O'Neill uh, in his article, Organization and Authority in the Traditional uh, Arts, the Iemoto system was based on a model of Heian era uh, hereditary hierarchy um, that was adopted by No and Kyogen. So the adoption of the Emoto system, however, was probably more of a practical decision than an artistic one, uh, with the shift from this uh, to this exclusive government patronage. Basically, suddenly there were a lot of people who were suddenly interested in being uh, Kyogen or no actors. Um, it was a good job. It was pretty stir It was pretty steady. Um, Eric Rath, uh, the scholar who, uh, who wrote um, The Ethos of No, uh, he says the Iemoto system was first adopted by the No World as a solution to financial and logistical problems associated with many groups claiming Ryu status uh, during the first half of the Edo era. Uh, he traces the official adoption uh, to Kanze Moto Akira, uh, who is a No a, a No a, a, a head of a No family, um, the Kanze No family. Uh, when he receives the approval uh, and help from the shogunate to publish a, uh, in 1765 his book called Mewa Era, Era, Book of Amended Chanting for No. So in this book, uh, or in this work, um, by employing the word Iemoto to describe his own position, Kanze Moto Akira demonstrates his long connection with No all the way back to the Kanze to use most influential figure, uh, Zeyama, Zeyami Moto Kiyo. Uh, in this publication, he also provides standardization performance texts of Kanze to you plays, uh, effectively uh, initiating a, syst a systematic linking of specific sanctioned play scripts to specific view. More importantly, however, Moto Akira gave himself one very important right as Iemoto. For the first time, the Iemoto would have the right uh, in this world, would have the right to grant or deny performance licenses, effectively giving the Ryu control of who was allowed to perform as a professional. Uh, as such, Moto Akira's declaration that the Iemoto alone could decide who, it, who was not eligible to perform solved the problem of too many new people, uh, too many new people trying to establish the Ryu by essentially professionalizing No and placing himself as the Kanze Ryu leader in the position of absolute authority over the Kanze Ryu. Uh, 
Uh, other Shikigaku uh, no and Kyogen Ryu soon follow suit, and the Iemoto system becomes a fixed part of the world of no and Kyogen. Now, speaking specifically about tradition, uh, the tradition I'll be focusing on today, this is where the Sagi school gets into its first scrap. Uh, you see, the Sagi Iemoto, uh, Sagi Niemon, uh, he claims to be the Sagi to use 10th uh, headmaster. Uh, and this quote, this, this claim is spurious at best. Um, uh, and his Ryu's acting uh, style of acting actually is, is sort of indicative of a new um, cutting edge kind of Kyogen that isn't the same as uh, specifically the Okura school, which is demonst demonstrably older. Um, uh, and their critics, which is where we have most of our information about Edo era Sagi to Yu Kyogen, uh, were the Okuda school, uh, and Okuda Toraki in particular. Um, he's very critical of Niemon in particular. He um, says he has no style. He says his family lineage is, is he's full of baloney. He also says that he he his name he even hit the name Sagi is actually it's not a it's not a mark of pride. It's an insult um, that he was he somebody gave it in jest because he had a really long neck. Um, all things that clearly a group uh, who was not exactly happy with uh, the Sagi school or the Sagi Ryu might say. Uh, other reason for this uh, is Sagi Ryu performers were actually considered the number one performers by the Tokugawa shogunate. Why this is, not really sure, but it's likely that this new sort of style uh, might have appealed to the shogunate and the samurai because it was a little closer to something that they could connect to in contemporary life. Um, but nonetheless, the Okura Ryu uh, had some choice words for Sagi Niemon. Uh, more, uh, in addition to that, Sagi Niemon uh, uh, himself, as well as the bran his branch, uh, his nephew, Sagi Denemon, who had a branch, uh, I'll go back, uh, he had a, he was the branch, uh, uh, head, head of the branch family, both of them got in hot water for doing things that uh, basically were not uh, in line with uh, what the shogunate expected of the artists, and um, uh, both of them were um, sanctioned several times for doing things they shouldn't be doing, uh, which of course gives more fuel to the fire for their critics. But I'm going to fast forward now all the way through the Edo period, and we get to the shift uh, from mod from the feudal era uh, into the modern era, which this which comes at the start of the Meiji period in 1868. At this point, everything changes for No and Kyogen families. Uh, the dissolution of the shogunate means that basically their uh, their patrons their their patron is their primary patron is gone. Uh, and they have to find new ways to support themselves financially. Now, history suggests that while the Okuda and Izumi Ryu were able to eventually right themselves um, and find a way to endure professionally, the Sagi Ryu uh, families could not do this, and the, the style effectively died. Uh, this is where I take issue. So... Uh, an initial goal of my dissertation is to correct uh, a common misconception that Sagi Kyogen ceased in the Meiji period. It merely just became something that operates outside this institutional uh, model of professionalized Kyogen in the modern world. Now, that being said, activity outside the professional sphere is not a, simply a matter of either or, and contemporary Sagi Kyogen's in-between status is a source of many dilemmas within the practice of Sagi Kyogen itself. So as such, a primary goal of my work uh, is to examine this liminal space in which contemporary Sagi Kyogen uh, practitioners operate. They're not part of the professional world, um, and one might be inclined to call them just amateurs or enthusiasts. However, unlike amateurs, contemporary Sagi Kyogen performers have been tasked with preserving uh, Sagi Kyogen traditions, um, which they can link uh, back to uh, the its professional life in the Edo era. Um, and like the professionals, they're responsible for passing on their knowledge to new generations of actors and also finding those new generations of actors. Uh, moreover, as contemporary Sagi Kyogen doesn't really have Iemoto, uh, the, the tradition in Saga, they sort of call each other, they call the people who are in charge Iemoto, but uh, they don't 
this is just so, sort of the way they list it. Um, I, I never found anything that was um, evidence that there was they were following uh, an, an Iemoto structure in the same way that the professional uh, world does. Um, so I, th I think it's safe to say that there really aren't any Iemoto. Um, but because they don't have uh, an Iemoto, uh, this has created a host of conundrums regarding how authenticity, legitimacy, and overall preservation and traditions are approached. Um, so as such, another crucial objective of uh, my dissertation is to illustrate how, in particular, regionalization uh, has served as a sur surrogate for the Iemoto system, informing contemporary Sagi Kyogen practice, preservation, and performance. So today, Sagi Kyogen is a regional art form, as I said, practiced uh, and passed on by a group of non-professionals. Uh, I use the word non-professional, uh, and by non-professional, I just mean uh, someone who does it, they have another job. Uh, they have a full-time job, and, uh, for example, uh, Bunmei Yone, Yonemoto Bunmei, he, is a, he was a full-time postman until he retired two years ago, uh, and his son, uh, Yonemoto uh, Taro, he actually just got elected uh, last this past, I think in the last six months to a um, city council. So they have full-time jobs, but their other full-time job is practicing, uh, preserving and passing on Saki Kilgan and Yamaguchi. Um, so uh, I, I can, I call them non-professionals um, to just to make that designate that difference between them and amateurs who just do it because they enjoy it and it's a hobby. Uh, however, uh, um, uh, so what's going on here is that these tr the, these uh, the, these transmitters, these um, these non professionals, um, they're really trapped because they have to do all of these things that their professional counterparts do, um, and they feel the pressure of having to. Uh, um, they feel the pressure of having to adhere to a lot of the rules that guide the professional world because those are the those are sort of the the rubrics uh, that define what Kyogen is and what Kyogen is not. Um, but they also are very much a group that is doing something that is unique to their region and they want to focus on that and they want to make that clear. So as I'm going to talk about through a series of uh, basically uh, how they negotiate this space. Uh, I'm going to talk about how basically their, their direct and indirect relationships to other culturally significant people, places, and things, uh, they've been able to position themselves as traditions that are bound to and representative of their respective regions. And I suggest that these, these, these um, relationships are actually mutually beneficial. Uh, in working together, each reinforces each other's claims of cultural value and significance. Uh, my analysis uh, employs a methodology guided by cultural anthropologist Clifford Gertz uh, and his book, uh, The Interpretations of Culture. Uh, in particular, I'm choosing to utilize his theories regarding uh, something called webs of significance. As Gertz explains, culture is comprised of webs which overlap and create a system by which man is an ana a suspended animal. In webs, uh, quote, uh, he himself has spun, end quote. So these webs, therefore, have a profound influence how an individual views their culture. Furthermore, Gertz notes that in order to interpret how these webs exert influence, one must identify and consider the internal relationships within these webs. There's the limitless and changing semiological signs or symbols that are encoded uh, within each of these webs. Uh, and each of these signs is coded with basically a set of control mechanisms, plans, recipes, rules, instructions for the governing of behavior and how to approach that cultural object or practice. So following these parameters, I'm going to consider the semiotic uh, implications and interac uh, interactions between uh, the webs that I've identified and signs contained in them. So what then are the webs uh, that suspend contemporary Saki Kyogen? Uh, I propose that there are eight specific webs uh, which play a role uh, in how contemporary Sagi Kyogen seeks to achieve slash reinforce cultural significance. Um, so uh, um, 
I'm going to be talking about primarily Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen, uh, as this was my this was uh, my my primary focus in my dissertation. But it's safe to say that similar webs are at play in other uh, the other Sagi Kyogen worlds in Saga and in um, on Sado Island, um, and uh, even more generally uh, with different non-professional traditional performing arts in Japan. So I've identified these eight webs. Um, uh, the first is Kyogen, and that means the historic Kyogen as a historical uh, uh, artifact, uh, as a traditional object uh, artifact, and both professional and non-professional practice. Uh, I also, second is contemporary Sagi Kyogen agents. Thus, these would be actors, preservation society members uh, who uh, um, who may be the actors themselves, or who just may be supporters who uh, help the actors in various ways, as well as texts, costumes, and props. The third uh, is Furusato, which is, it means hometown. Uh, fourth is performance spaces, uh, which include shrines, no stages, public halls, libraries, wherever they perform. Fifth is academia, which is research and education that is connected to uh, better understanding the traditions um, of a contemporary Sagi Kyogen practice. Six is museum and cultural institutions. Uh, so for example, uh, while I was uh, in uh, Yama, when I was doing my field work in Yamaguchi, uh, the Yamaguchi Prefectural Museum had a exhibit on uh, masks that they had, uh, uh, no masks that they had, um, and this was something that they brought uh, Yonemoto Taro in as a representative of traditional uh, No and Kyogen culture in Yamaguchi to talk about. Uh, also, the government is very important, local, prefectural, national, and how they are influencing how these art forms are, are able to continue. And then finally, neighbor, neighboring traditional art forms, other art forms that, um, uh, like uh, Sagi Kyogen, have a long history, but maybe don't necessarily fall into the same, uh, they don't fall into any sort of professional model. Uh, so the first uh, three webs. Uh, I consider these the primary webs. Uh, so in order for the process claim of claiming cultural significance to occur, all three of these webs must be present. Uh, Kyogen, first web, um, uh, and uh, Agent's second web, and Furusato uh, is the third web. Um, so both webs one and two initiate a claim and draw from each other's con and histories, but it's web three, Furusato, which pro provides a pathway to these claims. Um, I'm going to describe a little bit about Furusato in a bit. Um, uh, um, and I, I, I argue that basically Furusato, or rather the, the ability to engender feelings for it, positive feelings for it, uh, is one goal that contemporary Sagi Kyogen uh, strives to achieve. Uh, in this way, I believe that that Furusato is functioning as this kind of surrogate for professional Kyogen's uh, Iyamoto system, as it possesses a, sim a similar symbolic ability to imbue regional Sagi Kyogen actors and the art forms with cultural recognition. Uh, moreover, embodying Furusato has also served as a driving point of uh, commonality between contemporary Sagi Kyogen practice and other webs. Uh, this creates a, sy a system whereby uh, contemporary Sagi Kyogen is capable of reinforcing its claims through collaborations. Now, the other webs I've uh, identified are, are these secondary webs. Um, these webs uh, also play a very important role, um, but they don't necessarily all need to be present. Uh, and they can exist in any number of collaborative co combinations, so long as they are in concert with those three primary webs. Uh, so it's important to note that through this process, uh, these secondary web webs, uh, I, I, as I've mentioned, they they are they will reinforce Yamaguchi's uh, or Sagi Kyogen's claims of cultural significance, but they'll also reinforce their own status. Um, so, for example, that museum uh, example that I gave you, a museum brings in Taro to talk about Yamaguchi uh, to, as a Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen actor to talk about no masks. Uh, those no masks were take were borrowed from a collection held by a local shrine. The shrines 
importance to the community is reinforced by it being placed in the museum. The museum as a cultural agent is reinforced by bringing in artifacts that matter to the community. And Taro as the focal point in talking about these serves as a bridge between these two things and reinforces his own status while at the same time reinforcing the status of both the museum and the masks and the shrine where these masks are held. So I want to talk a little bit more about Furusato. Um, so while one, it's one, I believe it's one of uh, it's one of uh, the most important webs. Uh, if Furusato literally means old village, uh, but it's typically it typically is used to suggest hometown, and this word is invoked for a variety of reasons, according to Jennifer Robertson, which is right uh, the her her. Uh, her quote is here. Um, uh, furusato comprises both a temporal and spatial dimension. The temporal dimension is represented by the word furu, e, which signifies pastness, historicity, uh, sentience, and quaintness. Furthermore, furu e signifies the patina of familiarity and naturalness that objects and human relationships acquire with age, use, and interaction. The spatial dimension is represented by the word sato, which suggests a number of places inhabited by humans. These include a natal household, uh, such as a hamlet or village, and the countryside, as opposed to the city. Now, as Robertson is suggesting, furusato is a term that suggests there's a value in those things which are old and have some familiarity uh, and some sort of relative spatial kinship. Uh, in structural analysis of hometown psychology, Takeda Keita suggests that uh, Furusato also has a quote unquote community factor uh, in which Furusato is understood to be a place where quote unquote, there are people who take care of me. So Robertson further notes that the word Furusato has been appropriated by much of Japan. And I think that's important to note uh, that the, evoc the evocation of Furusato is an increasingly cogent means of simultaneously fostering we feelings and insideness at local and national levels. Uh, I mentioned this, uh, that it's something that is um, accessed or it is uh, something that is being utilized by uh, not just Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen or the Sagi Kyogen people, but all sorts of performing arts all over uh, Japan's, uh, Japan. Uh, it, I think of it as a tool um, and that, it, that it's being used in this way doesn't necessarily negate its power um, or dilute its power, um, sort of much in the same way uh, Moto Akira used the word Iemoto to help cement him, his position uh, and create uh, a professionalization of Kyogen, certain Kyogen families in the Edo era, so too are people in the contemporary world taking uh, the word Furusato to do something similar. Now, of course, it can't be denied um, that the word furusato, uh, much like the word tradition or custom, it's relative and it really depends entirely on the person who's invoking it. Uh, however, in my field research, it was made clear on multiple occasions that contemporary Sagi Kyogen actors were deeply interested in representing, sharing, and celebrating their hometowns through performance. Uh, while it may be impossible to quantify a word like furusato, um, it's clear to me that the we feelings that Robertson's referring to is a, really a primary goal which Sagi Kyogen actors are striving to embody, as well as engender among their audiences. Uh, um, Taro, for example, uh, he was going to be a professional no actor. He went to Tokyo Geidai, he went, uh, he studied Kanze, uh, Kanze do you know, uh, but he wound up coming back to um, to Yamaguchi to teach and pass on the tradition. And when I asked him why, he said, if I don't, if I'm not here, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen will disappear. And if Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen disappears, a part of Yamaguchi will disappear. So uh, he very much connects this thing. His responsibility is very much not only tied to the art form, but to his home as well. Now, turning to a, a diagram of the process, uh, as you can see, a combination of webs working together and viewed through the web of Furusato, they create this cyclical system in which their individual claims of cultural value are basically reinforced. Um, this process can begin with an agent of Yamaguchi, of Sagi Kyogen, uh, which is web two. Uh, it can be a person, it can be an artifact, or it can be with uh, any of the other webs I've identified. 
But once the cycle is initiated, it can either flow uh, towards or away from the agents. Uh, again, web two. But it must include, as I've said before, all three primary agents and end at Furusato. That's the goal. Um, now, upon reaching Furusato, both the primary webs and the other webs uh, claims are of cultural significance are then reinforced and the cycle can begin again and with every new collaboration and combination. So this collective reinforcement further benefits and strengthens webs, um, which are illustrated by the gray lines, uh, which suspend Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen culture or Sagi Kyogen culture. Now, one of the first things uh, I was told by uh, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen's current leader, uh, Yone Motobunme, uh, when visiting a rehearsal in 2015, was that it is not Sagi Kyogen. I said, oh, you do Sagi Kyogen. He said, no, 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 I don't do Sagi Kyogen. I do Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen. So it's clear Bunmei wanted me to understand right from the get-go that Yamaguchi is a central part of this art form. It's not just the place it's performed, it is also the place that defines what it is. Uh, professional Kyogen performers such as Shigeyama Sengoro Kyogen family in Kyoto or the Nomura Mansaku Kyogen family in Tokyo and those who frequent their performances may absolutely consider that each of these Kyogen families' art forms are indicative of their locales. I'm not saying that locale is something necessarily only shared by those who put it in front of their name. Um, however, it must be noted that while these professional families locate their fa they locate their family name uh, prior to the word Kyogen, so Shigeyama Kyogen or Nomura Kyogen. Uh, in Yamaguchi and Sato, it's the location that's placed before the word Kyogen. Uh, in Chiyoda, the neighborhood and shrine uh, of where Takashi, uh, uh, where the shrine, the Takashi Shrine is, um, this serves as the focal point. Um, and that's why in Saga, it's called Takashi Kyogen. So uh, the because it takes place uh, at that shrine, um, rather than the, na the name of the city, which it's in Kanzaki City. Um, but still, it's a specific location nonetheless. Now, while each of these perform professional families is, the professional families uh, are either part of the Okura or Izumi Ryu, uh, groups refer to themselves by their family names, uh, and they usually leave the Ryu part off. In contrast, the regionalized Sagi performers include the Ryu, such as Yamaguchi Sagi Ryu or Sado Sagi Ryu uh, Kyogen. However, the focus to the family name is again illustrating uh, with the professionals is illustrating a desire to see, be seen through their family's contributions to the art. The contemporary Sagi Kyogen performers, in contrast, they want people to know their art form as part of a local tradition uh, that goes beyond any individual actor's uh, life. As such, uh, the you is very important to them. However, place name still is, is the most important thing. Uh, so it can be surmised that in order to understand, for example, uh, let's say professional Shigeyama Kyogen, one must con consider the contributions to the art form that official members of this group who share the name have made. Furthermore, the name Shigeyama itself indicates that the people responsible for preservation practice and performance uh, uh, itself, the name itself indicates these are the people who are responsible for this, um, this preservation uh, and performance and passing on. Now, so much in the same way that a family name functions for the professional world, uh, location is serving as this conduit through which contemporary Sagi Kyogen asks to be viewed. Place names suggest that like the professional Kyogen family name, the Sagi uh, Kyogen of Yamaguchi or of Sado uh, is unique to those specific regions. In essence, placing that name um, before effectively identifies it as something unique to the region. So, uh, in an interview I conducted with members of the Yamaguchi Sagi Ryu Kyogen Preservation Society, um, uh, uh, sorry, this wasn't an, this wasn't one that I uh, conducted. This was a, an interview that was conducted and published. Uh, and during the interview, it, uh, they said, "If transmission remains in the region, it retains a high quality, though there may not be a person found to hand down the, tr the transmissions. Conversely, if it spreads too much, the art will suffer." Now, what's interesting about this statement is that the actors see the quality of their work tied directly to the art form's ability not only to stay in the region, but among the actors who are designated uh, agents of the transmission for the art form as well. They need to be from the region. Uh, as suggested, such limit limitations are uh, they're not without risk, uh, namely that the art form, as they say, it could fail to find suitable successors. Uh, 
and uh, the art form will disappear on its own. Now, this, of course, is what the actors think, and some of these feelings may not necessarily be shared by everyone who lives in Yamaguchi, uh, nor may residents of Yamaguchi or Sado or Kanzaki City uh, even be aware of these types of kyogen. Uh, in, uh, in the surveys that I conducted, it was very clear that some people, many people were coming to this for the first time. Some had lived there their whole lives had, and had never heard of it, even though it has been practiced for, uh, for example, in Yamaguchi for over 130 years. Now, the centrality of place in contemporary Sagi Kyogen's group names serve as a common ground, which all who reside in each... Uh, so basically, this name gives them even if they don't know it, it gives them a way of relating to people who are from that place. However, how, how each person relates or doesn't relate uh, is entirely subjective. Um, but what I'm sort of driving at is that that place name is very, uh, it, within it is encoded this, this instruction to connect because we both live in this place. Now, uh, I'm going to turn now from names into uh, tangible artifacts. And first, I want to talk about costumes. So if you look at the costumes, um, the costumes that uh, that you're looking at in these pictures here, they're actually relatively recent. Um, uh, they've been commissioned over time. Uh, the Preservation Society, which is basically the, it, it's a requirement for any um, regionalized art form, be they a folk art or be they not a folk art. Um, uh, any, any government recognized art form, uh, they need to have a preservation society. Uh, and the Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen Preservation Society was established in 1954. Uh, and uh, during this time, along with uh, uh, money that they receive from the government and the donations that they collect from the people of uh, the, the people of Yamaguchi, uh, um, it, they uh, over the years they've been purchasing new costumes. Uh, according to uh, Yonemoto Taro, uh, all new costumes were purchased from Sasaki no uh, costumes incorporated in Kyoto. Uh, and Kobayashi no costumes incorporated in Tokyo over this long period of time. Uh, the most recent purchases being in 1982, 2000, 2008, and 2012. Now, along with re re replacing the nagabakama, which are those long hakama pants, um, I don't think there's a picture of them, but they're long pants that basically uh, cover the feet and they drag behind you. Um, usually daimyo and master characters wear them. Uh, and also uh, the pictures here, uh, Taro Kaja Kataginu, uh, Taro Kaja being the servant character. Um, these were created, which uh, feature specifically, uh, and they were specifically created with these images, uh, images of a heron, a firefly, turnips, spiny lobsters, anchors, and water wheels. Uh, now, if you look at these images, uh, you can see how they're, uh, if you look into these images, you can see how they're specifically meant to uh, convey a connection to Yamaguchi uh, and to uh, embody feelings for, of Furusato as a result. Um, the first image of note is the heron, the heron or sagi. Sagi means heron. Um, while the connections to sagi kyogen, of course, they are obvious, um, herons are actually probably more recognizable to the people of Yamaguchi via uh, a heron dance, uh, the sagi no mai, uh, which is held annually at Yamaguchi City's Yasaka Shrine to begin their annual summer Yamaguchi Gion Matsuri, which is held from uh, July 20th through 27th. Uh, this summer event is Yamaguchi City's largest festival of the year, and it shares its name uh, with the more famous Kyoto Gion Matsuri. Now, according to um, the Yamaguchi Guide book, uh, which was published in 2011 by the Yamaguchi Prefectural University's Department of International Culture, the Heron Dance was introduced to Yamaguchi residents in 1542 by the Yoshimi family of the Suwano clan. Now, uh, Originally, it was part of the Kyoto Gion Matsuri, and this dance was performed in Yamaguchi as a semi-religious event in which the dance was intended to ward off illness, um, as is arguably Kyoto's uh, Gion Matsuri dance. Uh, it has, to this date, has remained an important part of the city's cultural heritage, and it's continued to be performed. Uh, like Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen, the Heron Dance is an intangible prefectural cultural asset. Um, it was designated in 1976, uh, and it is a practice held, also upheld by a preservation society. Uh, 
So therefore, the heron as a symbol holds an important place in Yamaguchi city culture, and it is associated with an occasion in which residents of Yamaguchi are meant to celebrate their city. So while the heron of Sagi Kyogen is not tied to this particular event, the semiotics associated with the image on the costume are drawing on a collectively recognized symbol uh, meant to engender feelings, uh, positive feelings of Furusato. Moreover, in print, the kanji for heron, sagi, is the same as the heron dance's sagi no mai. As such, simply seeing the name of Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen in print would likely resonate with a local person as Yamaguchi and Heron are two words that are already linked together because of this Gion Matsuri tradition. Now, as with the Heron, the Genji Firefly uh, is another image. I don't know that I have a picture, unfortunately, but uh, the Firefly is another image with uh, that's embedded with uh, significant cultural connections to Yamaguchi, both in the prefecture and more locally in Yamaguchi City. Interestingly enough, the, Yama, uh, the Genji Firefly was a, a very memorable character I encountered when, uh, when I first visited Yamaguchi uh, in 2015. I, when I arrived there, I, um, I, was, I had just come from my hotel and I was looking for the, um, the hometown heritage center, which is where they current, the group currently practices. Um, but this is, uh, Yamaguchi is a, um, is a, is a countryside. Uh, I mean, it's a city, but it's still the countryside. So it was very dark and I couldn't see anything, but as I walked and made my way to find it, of course, I I was, uh, because it was the summer, I was greeted by these fireflies. Um, now, um, uh, after a quick stop in a local establishment, I, I made it to where I was going. Um, however, I later learned um, that when I crossed a river, which was right next to where I asked for directions, there's a plaque. And on this particular plaque, uh, which is on the Ichinosaka River, uh, it, this is noted as one of the two most famous spots uh, for observing fireflies in the Yamaguchi prefecture in the months of May and June. Uh, and I saw them in July. So, um, so this spot, along with uh, another uh, in the nearby neighborhood of Miyano, uh, is, this is where you are supposed to go to spot them. Now, uh, according to the, the prefectural website, these fireflies, um, the, the, the tradition of paying heed to them dates back uh, to the time of the Oichi clan, uh, which is the 12th to 14th century, um, and people going to the Ichinosaka River to just watch them. Now, it's impossible to really validate that claim. I mean, it's on a prefectural website. Um, but um, it is true that the river site was designated a prefectural national monument, natural monument in 1935. Uh, moreover, uh, it's clearly something that in local lore believed to be true, uh, and the extent that is represented as such on the prefecture's website. As such, uh, in wearing the firefly image, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen is connecting to a collectively recognized local pastime of firefly viewing at Ichinosaka River by Yamaguchi residents, making this a very, very one-to-one -one connection. Uh, finally, uh, there are the images of the spiny uh, lobsters, anchors, turnips, and water wheels. Again, this was a conscious decision. Uh, Yonemoto Taro notes that they chose these specifically because uh, these uh, are these are patterns uh, that are on costumes that were first borrowed from original costumes that were owned by the Mori family. Uh, this was the reigning family during the Edo period, uh, as well as by a prominent merchant family. Uh, the Kikuya. Uh, so the Kikuya were uh, were vassals of the Yamaguchi regional lords, the Ouchi clan. So they actually are older than the Mori clan uh, during Japan's medieval period, uh, but they continue to serve the reigning daimyo when the powers changed hands to the Mori. Um, when Mori Hidenari uh, took power as the daimyo of the Choshu domain, uh, which is present-day Yamaguchi prefecture, uh, the Kikuya family came to the capital city of Hagi, which is about half an hour north of Yamaguchi city. Uh, and with him, he, uh, they were, uh, the, the, the Kikuya were responsible for building much of the new capital. Uh, uh, in 1604, the Kikuya built their primary residence in Hagi. Uh, and this residence was a sprawling compound with gardens and places for no and Kyogen performances. Uh, today, this residence remains as one of Japan's best maintained Edo era housing examples, uh, and this building, along with four others belonging to the Kikuya family, have been listed also as, ta in ta as tangible cultural assets. They are tangible here. Now, during the Edo period, the Kikuya family prospered and were active in marine trade and farming. 
Uh, as such, Tara explains the images of top spiny lobsters, anchors, turnips, and water wheels came to be associated with and recognized by contemporary Yamaguchi citizens as symbols of the Kikuya family. Now, without extensive surveys of Yamaguchi citizens, I, I, which I did not do, it's impossible uh, to know to the extent which they associate these images with the Kikuya family, uh, as Taro says. Uh, and additionally, the fact that these specific images appear on the costumes owned by the Mori and Kikuya families, uh, that, however, does confirm a tangible connection between past Kyogen performed in Yamaguchi and present-day Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen through the replication of this image. So, uh, turning next to performance spaces, uh, and, uh, which I'm specifically talking about shrines and no stages. So on November 3rd, 2016, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen held its fall annual performance at Noda Shrine. Uh, Noda Shrine's uh, no stage scene in this picture uh, has played an important role in Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen history and bolstering its connection through Furusato. Uh, in, ex in examining the spaces where contemporary Sagi Kyogen takes place, it can be seen how the primary webs, Kyogen, Sagi Kyogen, Furusato, overlap and draw influence from spaces like this. Uh, to begin, all three types of contemporary Sagi Kyogen are tied to specific performance spaces. Each has its own cultural significance. Uh, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen has been tied to Noda Shrine ever since it was first performed uh, contemporary. So Yamaguchi, well, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen is contemporary Sagi Kyogen. Uh, it has been tied to Noda Shrine ever since the professional, uh, he was a professional actor, a professional Sagi Kyogen actor. His name was Shunichi Shosaku X. Um, he first performed there in 1886 as part of uh, a ridgepole raising ceremony, uh, uh, just a foundation ceremony for the shrine. Um, and uh, the shrine itself enshrines uh, a local hero, Mori Tadachika, um, who was one of the Choshu, uh, the Choshu region's daimyo and who helped overthrow the shogun in 1868. Uh, the shrine was relocated in 1886 to its present location, and Shunichi was invited to perform an, uh, a celebration of this occasion. Uh, in these initial stages, uh, you can see how the webs of uh, the agents, Shunichi being one of them, Kyogen, cultural institution being Noda Shrine, and the government, Mori clan uh, enshrinement, they all come together to reinforce each other's important cultural significance uh, and importance. Um, but basically, the results of this performance uh, was uh, led to the founding of the group, uh, which exists today. Uh, this suggests that the members of the Yamaguchi City community did indeed value in Shunichi's uh, the tenth role as a local practitioner of an art form that they tied to the locale. Uh, Shunichi was, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, he was active, an active performer in Yamaguchi specifically. So he is a homegrown Sagi Kilgan actor. Now, Noda Shrine uh, added this stage that is here in 1936, uh, thanks to another a donation by another native son, Mori Mota Akira. Um, Kobayashi Seki, uh, the, the Japanese theater scholar, notes that the construction of the stage was an important symbol for the city of Yamaguchi. Uh, as the as the local Shinto No Association began sponsoring biannual events, which included both No and Kyogen performances. During these performances, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen actors performed alongside local No actors, which I think is a very interesting thing that you have these local actors who are not professionals. Uh, certainly, um, Shunichi might have, uh, he was, but he was definitely working with people who he was teaching, and these were not professional actors, um, but they were performing alongside professionals. Um, they were loaned costumes that the shrine owned, and as mentioned above, uh, they these were originally owned by the Morty clan. Now, when financial problems stemming from World War II forced Noda Shrine to cease sponsoring most of its known Kyogen performances, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen definitely suffered. Uh, the loss of this performance venue, combined with the complexity of post-war life, led Jap uh, life in Japan, led to the group performing only sporadically, if at all, for many years. Uh, the stage was re relocated closer to Noda Shrine Grounds in 1991, and now if you go, they're practically right next to each other. You can see it. Uh, and in this year, it also, but in this year, 1991, it also received a tangible cultural property status from the city of uh, Yamaguchi. Since 2007, the Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen Preservation Society has made a concerted effort to raise money specifically for performances at Noda Shrine pretty much every other year. Uh, 
While it may be noted that the performance space is now kind of a rental space for them, uh, they rent it not only to do the shows, but also um, they use the space uh, to uh, rehearse their uh, children's uh, Kyogen work, uh, children's Kyogen classroom, uh, which performs uh, uh, in schools, but also uh, at various regional, uh, at various um, uh, local festivals uh, and events throughout the year. Now, uh, the uh, so uh, it's uh, I, I do want to make it clear though that th because this stage has such an important history to Yamaguchi as a community, Yamaguchi City as a co its community, it's been very important for Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen to keep up that relationship. Uh, and they do the the performers really do view uh, that relationship as a one to one thing as this building exists, so too has our art form. Um, Taro, um, in particular, has worked really hard to maintain this relationship. Uh, one of the interesting things that happened uh, was when uh, on New Year's, I went to a variety of shrines uh, just to pay respects uh, for the new year, and I found him working at the shrine, um, passing out fortunes. Uh, so he, uh, he, he has to volunteer sometimes. Uh, uh, now, I also want to add that while the, the as I said, the group doesn't always perform here anymore, and they have to raise money, and if they don't, uh, they they don't perform here. Uh, but uh, in the 1990s, uh, they commissioned Yamaguchi Theater Crafts to create a backdrop curtain, uh, which perhaps you are noticing the similarities here from what's behind me and what's in this picture. Um, that's an exact replica of the Matsubame or pine tree that's painted on the back of the Noda Shrine No Stage. So along with the replica of the Matsubame backdrop, the group received permission from Noda Shrine to include, as you can see here, it's a little blurry, but I'm sure you can probably read it, uh, to include the words Noda Shrine, no stage, uh, which appear at the bottom right-hand corner of that curtain. Uh, in this way, the web of Noda Shrine's no stage serves as an important reinforcement for Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen's activity, regardless of where they perform. Uh, this performance uh, that uh, has uh, Tsuchimura Hirotaka, um, this was uh, done at Yamaguchi Prefectural University in the winter of 2017. Um, likewise, on Sato Island, there's the stage at uh, Daizen Shrine in the Manomachi neighborhood, which is where uh, uh, the uh, contemporary Sato Sagi Kyogen performs. Uh, Daizen's no stage is the oldest uh, extant one on the island, uh, circa 1846, and it's long been a space where both no and Kyogen have been regularly performed. It received prefectural tangible uh, cultural folk property status uh, in 1997 from the city of Niigata. Uh, and unfortunately, Sadosaki Kyogen is only performed once a year uh, in June at Daizen Shrine. However, the Manomachi Sadosagi Kyogen group, uh, which is the remaining Niemon derived side, uh, style of Sagi Kyogen, has been connected to this shrine since the 1980s. Uh, the ongoing performances in this space coincide with the foundation of the Sadosagi Kyogen Research Society. Uh, again, uh, in, 80, in 1984, they received um, a government recognized status. Now, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not sure where this group perf performed before then. There's no stages all over this island. Uh, in the future, I hope to spend more time with this group and learn more about their history. Finally, uh, is the Takashi Shrine uh, no stage. Um, and, uh, and this is in Saga Prefecture. Uh, and as I said, it take uh, said earlier, it takes its name specifically from Takashi Shrine, which has a no this this sort of makeshift no stage, where the an again it's an annual performance takes place. Uh, unlike the no stages in Sato and uh, in Yamaguchi, uh, this is only a partial no stage. Uh, I think maybe if you look real carefully, you can see that uh, the Hashigakari uh, or the bridgeway that typically exists in the back uh, stage right of uh, no stage, it, this is comprised of a series of like makeshift boxes and a stairwell that they've done to create it. Um, the fact that they don't have uh, a Hashigakari, I, I, one of my sort of lingering questions is, has, has that affected in, the, in any way how they've 
uh, how the plays have been performed, and that's something I want to know more about. Um, how am I doing on time? Okay, so uh, very quickly, I just want to say, uh, so uh, it's probably clear from my uh, conversation today that uh, Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen is clearly the most active of the groups and they perform in a variety of spaces. Um, and so I want to just mention a few of the cultural institutions, uh, 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 which is this Web6. Um, so oh, the one performance space is the Yamaguchi City Central Public Hall, which from 1962 to 1987 served as the home base for Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen rehearsals uh, every Saturday evening. Uh, this building serves many, served many functions in its time and hosted a variety of local arts in addition to providing space for the Preservation Society to rehearse. Uh, uh, then uh, the next space, the Yamaguchi uh, Hometown Heritage Center or the Yamaguchi Furusato Densho Center, uh, that was founded in 1991 and this is where they have been practicing and they do occasional performances as well as exhibits uh, of Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen artifacts. Uh, this was the the, the um, Furusato Densho Center was a, a brewery from 1886, and it turned into a private residence in 1891. Um, the building became a prefectural intangible, uh, tangible cultural property in 1999. Um, so as probably you can guess from uh, its name, uh, it's really focused on preserving Yamaguchi culture, uh, along with uh, handicrafts uh, and pottery uh, as well. They do education classes on local culture. Um, and of course, one of their main, um, one of the main things they promote is Yamaguchi Sagi Yu Kyogen. Now the Preservation Society performs uh, uh, in this space frequently um, and the rehearsal room, uh, you can sort of see this garden area here. Um, it opens up uh, and uh, the, ch the, the children's uh, Kyogen classroom, uh, they they perform here once a year uh, in the springtime. And it's really quite a magical event because you get to sit in the garden and watch a Kyogen play. It's a lot of fun. Um, they also perform at the Yamaguchi uh, Hometown Festival, uh, which is in November. Now, uh, it might be said what these spaces have in common is this desire to gather people together under the umbrella of activities which are unique to Yamaguchi City and promoting uh, feelings of Furusato. Um, so in this way, uh, the, 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 these different types of art forms that are housed under this one roof are all working together to reinforce the idea that each one is culturally significant and each one has importance. Uh, uh, so uh, there's some pictures here uh, that those little cute dolls that you see down there, those are Ochi Nuri lacquerware dolls, um, which uh, are quite expensive. Um, but uh, you, if you go to Yamaguchi City, you'll find them in various places. But uh, uh, so much in the same way that space and material goods um, that are retained by the actors provide uh, reinforcement to artistic heritage claims. You can see how these neighboring art forms when presented together with Yamaguchi Sagi Kyogen, all under these emblems of Furusato, um, reinforce these claims that they have. Now, so I've spoken today uh, about looking beyond just uh, the tradition and looking at where these interconnected systems of players reside, all of who play a part in empowering and reinforcing how contemporary Sagi Kyogen has come to be valued in the places it's practiced. Now, drawing on the friends of uh, friends and neighbors affinity for Furusato, contemporary Sagi Kyogen basically has reinvented itself as this regional tradition driven by its ability to embody the spirit and history of the locales in which it's practiced. Uh, equally important, I hope that this conversation has demonstrated the importance of considering these, these performers who operate outside the professional world. These non-professionals uh, or transmitters, they feel a responsibility that ensuring that these traditions, both old and new, endure. Thank you very much.